California, it costs 35% more to bring a two by four to market from California in California than it does for us to import it from Oregon. So you can imagine what that's done to our timber industry. So these people were sitting around bemoaning the fate of their industry and we have this Global Warming Solutions Act. It's regulating diesel particulate matter and essentially what it's doing is it's putting the loggers out of business. This is the final blow. They're, they're large industrial chippers that sit out in the forest. Those things are now illegal as of January 1. So I'm looking around this cafe and it's literally, it's, a, it's made out of split logs. It's this old place. It's been there since the early 1900s. There are all these black and white photos on the walls all these old logging operations, all the mills that no longer exist in California, and I'm feeling powerless. And they're saying to me, as the Tea Party guy, what can you do? How, how can you help us? Is there anything you can do? And I went home, and those images were seared in my mind, and I felt powerless because I didn't know what to do. And a few days later, I was down in the Central Valley, and you guys probably have heard that they've shut off the water to a lot of our farmers in the Central Valley because they, the EPA alleges that there's a minnow that's threatened. So instead of protecting human beings, we now have the highest suicide rate in the country in the Central Valley of California because multi-generation family farmers are losing their farms. Our government is intentionally putting them out of business. Over 400,000 acres are fallow. And I'm down there listening to the farmers. They're telling me the same story that the loggers were telling. Same story. These are people who pulled this nation out of the earth, right? The farmers, the loggers, the miners. They literally built this country with their hands and their hearts out of the earth. And I'm hearing what the farmers are saying, and I start to realize the farmers don't know and don't care what's going on with the loggers. The loggers don't know, and they don't care about what's going on with the farmers. Why? Because the ruling elite have designed it that way. The farmers are suffering under EPA regulations, the loggers are suffering under AB 32, so they never get together and fight the government. Because all the loggers get together and complain about the diesel particulate regulations. Guess what? The farmers are exempt from those regulations. They don't have diesel equipment? Of course they have diesel equipment. But the regulators understand that if they regulate both of these massive industries, those industries will join together and defeat the regulation. So we put together on August 28th of 2009 a huge rally in downtown Sacramento. We surrounded the Capitol with over 300 tractor trailer rigs from all over the country. We had about 30 pieces of massive farm equipment that we parked on the street in front of the Capitol. And we put about 15,000 people from the construction industry, the concrete industry, truckers, farmers. We had logging trucks. All these people got together with a unified message to the government. It's not a complicated message. It's the message of the Tea Party. And the message is, get off our backs. That's it. <laughs> this is why I think this idea of interstate compacts is so powerful. It doesn't matter what your industry is. It doesn't matter what your occupation is. Frankly, it doesn't even matter what your political persuasion is. If you believe in the power of an individual American to raise themselves up, if you believe in the power of Americans collectively to raise up the country, then you believe that Americans should be free to do those things. And the idea of an interstate compact returns that power to the states. And I, you know, we're starting here, we're talking about a health care compact. Obviously because Obamacare flies in the face of what so many Americans believe, that we start there. That's the easy, low-hanging fruit. But there are so many places to go after this. So we start with health care. Anybody think we ought to bring education back home out of Washington? I like that idea. Anybody think that the states and the local people should be able to regulate their own environments? So we bring environmental regulation back home. And being radical, because that's what we do as Tea Partiers, it's what we like. You know, Founding fathers were radical, right? So what we believe is we take it all the way back to the original four cabinets, ultimately so that the people at home control what happens in their own lives. That's the vision for interstate compacts. Do you guys think that sounds good? Okay, now that requires, in my opinion, you guys to do something extraordinary. The people can't do this by themselves. I can assure you there are millions of us out there. Tea Party Patriots has over 2,800 chapters. You can't turn around in your state and not point at a Tea Party Patriot chapter. So they're everywhere. 
and they support you, and they will support you, but I got to tell you what they're looking for. They have high standards. They're looking for champions. That's what they're looking for. They're looking for heroes. They hate the word compromise. I know that's going to be rough for some folks. All right, we, we, we've heard it a lot already. Okay, now that we're governing, we're going to have to be prepared to compromise. You guys start talking that way, you will see an army peel away and fade back into the woods faster than you could possibly believe. And the worst part is once they get into the woods, they're going to start sniping at you. <laughs> All right? That's not a threat, it's just that that's the way these people are. They are passionate, they are engaged, they are invigorated, they are educated. Could you ever have imagined in your wildest dreams that the average American would understand the process and the language of deem and pass? All right, think about that. Millions of Americans understand this arcane procedure now. These are smart, sophisticated people. In a lot of cases, they know more than long-term legislatures about the laws that are being passed. They're reading them, they're studying them, they're studying the Constitution, they are engaged. And they are, more than anything, your allies and your army, if you are willing to be their champions. That's what we need. We need you guys to go out there and take the brave stands to lead the charge. And I can promise you the army is there to back you up. The political capital you need is there to back you up in the millions. You guys saw it in this election. People were worried that the Tea Party was going to go away. Anybody think after what they saw in the few weeks after the election, the Tea Party has gone away? No way. More chapters. We've added way more chapters, millions more people after the election. People like a winner. So people saw that the Tea Party stood for change, and some change actually happened. And so many more people are joining. There's a lot more power coming to stand behind you. And I want to close with this. And I, I'm, I'm not a great public speaker. I, I like to quote people. but I, I'm going to butcher this, but I want you to know it's important because it represents what I see. What my, that's my co-founder over there, Jenny Beth Martin. When we travel all over the country, this is what we see. Ronald Reagan once said that people were saying to him, we live in a time when there are no heroes, but they just don't know where to look. We know where to look. It's in your town. It's in your state. It's in your county. There are millions of heroes in this country, and they're willing to step up and do the hard work to get these compacts passed. I ask you guys, lead the way and help us get it done. Do, I, do you want to dance? Thank you very much. Thanks to. to Yeah, we've got about 15 minutes for questions, so we can pass it. Yeah. We can pass that around while people ask questions. Um, they're in the back.